Hi there, everyone. We have another buffet of magnificent objects for you today. And all of these relate to a gentleman called Henry James. Yes? Indeed. Who not, was Henry James, Keith? Well, not the novelist Henry James, uh, but the engineer Henry James. He was the superintendent of my second favourite organisation in all of England, and that is the Ordnance Survey, who yeah. make maps. My favourite, of course, being the Royal Society. Of course, yes. Well, good second, good second. The Ordnance Survey, the map makers of this country, he was the boss, Henry James, and we have here a paper in Philosophical Transactions, the Journal of the Royal Society. What has Lieutenant Colonel James written about here, Keith? Well, he's repeating a very famous experiment, the Shehalian experiment, which was conducted by Neville Maskelyne in the 18th century. And this was hanging a plumb line towards the centre of the earth and seeing how far it was deflected by a mountain. And you can estimate the density of that mountain and therefore, hopefully, uh, the earth itself. OK. Now, in this paper, there's a very famous... Is it a mountain? Got, yeah. It's not a hill, it's a mountain. It, it, I think it's a hill. It's not quite big enough for a mountain. Okay. Uh, this is Arthur's Seat near Edinburgh. Anyone who has been to Edinburgh in Scotland will know this. It's quite a, a rocky, pretty, interesting looking hill right in the city, isn't That's it? Right. I think it's the remains of an old volcano, in fact. Is it? I oh, think there so, we yeah. Go. James has done all his mathematics, he's done all the science here, trying to figure out more exactly about the mass density, things like that. Of course, being a, a man of maps, we've got a map here showing Arthur's seat, exactly where it is. And if you turn right back to the beginning, yes, you'll see it mentions something else. I forward here with a model of Arthur's seat. So when he submitted the paper, he submitted a model of the hill. He did, and remarkably, we still have it. I think I know what's in the box. I think you do. Let's have a look. Look at that. It looks like it's been 3D printed with all the layers kind yeah, of... Yeah, uh, I don't know, quite know how they manage that, that layering effect on, on plaster, but it's, it's really rather nice. That's the contour lines being represented That's there. That's right, yes. So there we go. It's a very simple thing. I mean, there's a compass on it. Pretty much that's it. But really, it's, a, it's just a, a map of the seat. Keith, you strike me as someone who's probably climbed Arthur's seat. You can walk. It's not a hard walk, is it? It isn't hard. I haven't been to Edinburgh for years. But yes, when, when I, when, last time I was there, I did, did walk up it. It's, it's quite nice of a walk. I can imagine that. You're a bit of an outdoorsman, good, aren't you? Good, good views of the town. Yes. Interesting paper. Fantastic model. But Keith has another surprise up his sleeve, again pertaining to Henry James. That's right. Now, this is a piece of terrific science. Uh, but let's have a bit of fun as well, because what Henry James is, is known for, if anything these days, is his work in early photography. Photozincography was very useful for reproducing maps, and the Ordnance Survey pioneered that process. But we've got some, some rather different kinds of images for you in the small envelopes. This is going to be a little bit strange, people, but very interesting. Bear with us. So we should discuss who John Bailey is, because he's a very important character in what we're about to see. Yeah. John Bailey was a cabin boy on a ship. The ship was the RMS Roan, and it sank. It got caught in a hurricane, and uh, down it went. John Bailey was a survivor. A lot of people died on this, didn't they? Mm, that's right. More than 120, I think. OK. But not John Bailey, the cabin boy. He survived, and then his paths somehow seemed to cross with Henry James. And uh, James did some portraits. Here's a portrait. It's simple enough. It's obviously they've put him in a ring there, a safety ring, propped up between two chairs. But there's more. Have a look at this next picture. So we've had a bit of, bit of photoshopping, a bit of CGI. A bit of watercolour. A bit of watercolour. Well, that was the Photoshop of the day. Indeed. Henry James has done this. Yeah, so he's taken his original photograph, which is posed, and then he's put watercolour over the top so that you get a nice maritime scene there. So this is the young lad floating off after he's been thrown off the Rhone, and off he goes to, to the island to be rescued. Why is he doing this? Yeah. Why is he pretending that he's got this picture? Well, because that one would be photographed again, and uh, then you would sell those images. Presumably it was to, to raise some funds to, to help the, the boy out because he would have lost all of his kit on the ship, of course, so he was needy. And if you look on the back of some of these photographs, you'll see there's a, a series and it just gives you a little description of the boy's, John Bailey's experiences in the aftermath of the shipwreck. 
Okay. So he is the lad, presumably on shore now. And he's looking like he's sort of contemplating his survival. Wow, that was a that was a heck of a shipwreck, but here I am on the land. I made it. And you can see the re-photographed image there. That's the original with all sort of the hand painting on it. And then it's been mass produced here. This is your one you'd probably get in the shops or whoever you would get this. I don't know. That's how right, you... yeah. Let's have a look on the back of this one. Oh, indeed, this is, this is a number two resting on his life buoy after being 12 hours on it in the sea and drifting 25 miles from the wreck to Beef Island. So it, it does read like they've actually captured the picture, like it's a news image. So that, That's right, yeah, yeah. They haven't got like a little asterisk saying this is a reproduction mm -hmm. or as it may have appeared. No, but it's very immediate, isn't it? But here's the final one in the sequence. This is number six. Okay, so there's number six. John Bailey and John Minns having both miraculously escaped with life from the wreck, recounting their adventures to each other. Here's number three. Oh, we've got a three. Oh, so okay. there we go. There he is. Now he's being a bit more playful there, taking up his life boy and going in search of some people of Beef Island to which he was blown in 12 hours. There we go. What and here he is again. This is number five. Here's number five. I mean, I guess there's only so many poses you can do with a life boy, but they're certainly milking it. At home, new rigged, and thankful to God for his escape from the perils of the sea. Yep. So hang on, what one have we missing? Uh, I think we're uh, four, I think. We've got no number four. No. Keith. To be continued. I, uh, <laughs> I, I am a bit of a card collector, and I cannot tell you how much that irks me. You'd be looking for it now, won't you? I know. <laughs> if, if anyone has a number four in the Roan Wreck John Bailey collection, get in touch. I and the Royal Society need it to complete <laughs> their collection. This is the great thing about science. Here's a practical experiment that allows you to determine something about the nature yeah, of that. I think the conclusion's right here, because I, I don't know what yeah. this word is, but it's something of the electric matter. So the sameness <clears throat> of the electric matter with that of lightning completely demonstrated. Wow. These findings are electrifying, at the time at least.